Good morning, welcome to Planet Mojo. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use your metal ceiling itself as a vapor barrier. But first, I need to get this last panel in place. If you've been following the channel, I had some issues with this panel last night and it was getting pretty late. I had a late start yesterday. So what I have to do is push this up as tight as it'll go and then measure the overlap on both ends. I need to get this panel dead center because all of the panels that come after it will be centered according to this one. So let me get that done, get this panel fastened up there and then I'll show you how to use the metal itself as a vapor barrier. All right, so my overlap on this side is two and five eighths plus, that's a 32nd, and then we have one and three sixteenths plus on the other side. So the two pluses added together equals one sixteenth, and the two and five eighths plus one and three sixteenths plus a sixteenth equals three and seven eighths divided by two equals one and fifteen sixteenths. So that's what I want on each side. I'm gonna shift that around till I get that and then remeasure it again. And then once I get it exactly where it needs to go, I need to measure over from the edge of the tin over to the wood and then recut this. I got to take this whole thing back down again, get that recut, put it back up, get it screwed in place. Then I will show you how to seal this all up. All right, my overlap is exactly one and five sixteenths on both sides. And I'm gonna have to hold this up. Okay, there we are. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it like I can, but the overlap is exactly one inch. So I know what I did, it was a math thing. So what I'm gonna do is take an inch and a quarter off that, and I'll just get back to you when we do the vapor barrier stuff. Okay. I have the first row of my ceiling done. Now I'm gonna try to explain this vapor barrier stuff to you. I don't know if I'll be able to do a good enough job, but I'll give it a try. The thing is, you'll see on a lot of shows where they put a plastic barrier in first, a big heavy plastic sheet, then put the ceiling on and then they blow in insulation up here. The problem with that is this is basically a vapor barrier, the metal, and then the plastic is also a vapor barrier, and the two of them right together like that gives you what's called a vapor sandwich. Any moisture or vapor that gets in between the two will condense and turn to water and it really has nowhere to go. It could spread throughout the entire area, but no matter what, it's gonna do some damage. So what I'm doing, all I did was run a piece of tape on that back edge, and you can see that the back edge is real nice and tight. So it really doesn't need much sealing back there. The big area is the ends, and I have the areas in between the valleys taped up, and then I foamed into the ridges there. Let's see if any squeezing out. It shouldn't, but I'll show you on the other side. You could see that there's gaps all over the place, and when you're using this, air can get in, and will get in, like right here, and then once it's up above the ceiling, it can go all the way to the other end. You can see the light under all of them valleys there. It can go wherever it wants up here. And if it finds a place up through the insulation, 
it's gonna get that insulation all wet. So basically the reason I'm doing it this way is that I don't wanna create a vapor sandwich, but at the same time, I don't want it as leaky as it is. Okay, I'm about halfway. I had to seal the valleys at this box here, but the front edge of the box is not gonna get sealed at all. The tin goes to the far end. It's just gonna get taped into the box and then there'll be molding covering that later. I will tape up that seam though, and then I'll jump to the next bay down there. On all of the other ones, except for this very end one, it's just going to get a bit of tape right along the seam. So on those, what I'm going to do is when I go up to insulate, I'll just tape first and then insulate and then move to the next one. Instead of going up and down the ladder twice, I'll just have to do it the once. And as I put the panels up, I put this panel up, then that panel, then the center. So as soon as I put this one up, I'll tape and foam the end then do the same thing on this one. So after I have the center one done, the foam should be dry on both the ends. All right, I have my first row done and probably the hardest row of the whole job. Maybe the other end will be hard too. And again, what I'm doing here is not creating a vapor sandwich. That would be two impermeable layers right next to each other. On the walls, we have house wrap and then the tin. House wrap is very permeable. It keeps water from getting into the structure, but it does almost nothing for vapor. This stuff right here, craft paper, is similar to that. Vapor will go right through this stuff, but it slows it down enough so that any vapor that does go through it will go completely through it and dissipate before it can cause wetness. Good, good, good. All right, now I'm gonna be adding insulation to this. The insulation I'm adding is two by six insulation. So that'll come up to the top of these. And the reason for that is I'll be blowing in the blown in insulation from that second bay in right there, which is, I guess, 12 feet. So if I leave these empty and blow insulation over here, I'm gonna get some gaps where I have no insulation, I'm sure of it, and I don't want that. Another reason is I won't be in any rush to blow in the insulation. As I go, I'll have insulation, and as I work my way that way, I'll have insulation, and if it gets really cold out, I can put my heater down anywhere on the floor underneath the ceiling part, and the warm air is going to rise up and come right around the ceiling right where I'm working. So let's get going insulating this so we can get the next row in. All right, I am all done with the first row. I think I explained this well enough about the vapor barrier. 
this metal acts as a perfect vapor barrier and it actually does have like a vapor barrier sandwich but this craft paper is nowhere near an impermeable vapor barrier so anything that would get between the tin and this is just going to soak right through this and it's going to dissipate and go away you have to have a way for moisture to escape because moisture is always going to get in I've talked about using insulation as an air baffle in previous videos and that's what I'm talking about right there. I will explain that in much more detail tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll be putting another row of tin in and insulating all the way up to the six foot mark. So it should be pretty interesting. I'll explain the whole insulation as air baffle thing tomorrow. So. If you want to see that, make sure you subscribe and click on the update icon. If you have any questions or comments, make sure you put them in the comments section below. And if you share the video and or give it a like, it helps the channel out greatly. Thanks for watching and have a great day.